This is a video solution to the country um, magazine problem. So let's uh, start by looking at the data. So the data is as follows. We have, um, you'll see that we have a variety of um, activities. So ranging from how much do you like to cook, uh, do you like decorating, gardening, and so forth. And then there's a handful of um, demographic variables from age, uh, occupation, gender, to income. And we see uh, immediately that there's a whole lot of missing values. So for example, um, there's quite a few missing values for dwelling. Um, there's a bunch of zeros, less than a quarter. We're not quite sure how many, but a bunch of zero ages, and that doesn't make any sense. Um, if you look at occupation, looks like the modal category is missing. Okay, so we have big problems with the demographics. Um, let's start with doing our, our clustering. Now, the, the thing to notice about, um, about these indicator variables of, of interests is that they're probably all horribly right skewed. Now, we know that by looking at um, the mean and the medians. So notice that you know, the median value for cooking is zero, meaning middle person, half over at least half the people don't, don't do much cooking at all. Um, yet the mean is positive, and so whenever the mean is greater than the median, that indicates uh, you know, right skewness. And so you see that across the board, in some cases, uh, like woodworking or needlework, um, the third quartile is zero, so at least you know, three quarters of the sample don't do any needlework. Now, um, in the assignment, I just asked you to standardize these variables, but given the right skewness, um, we might want to also look at logging them. Um, it's not um, necessarily part of the, uh, the, the problem. I won't take points off, but it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt us to look at that as well. The logging um, is not necessarily going to help that much. You know, when you have th three quarters of your values are zeros, um, you know, logging isn't going to change that much. It's, you know, in, in essence, you have one giant mode. Maybe we should look at that variable. Let's look at a histogram of uh, country dollar needlework. And so, you know, it's, uh, you got one giant mode and then, uh, then, then some other values out here. Logging it isn't, just isn't going to change it much. But let's see, see if we can make something out of this data set with k-means. So, First thing is uh, let's follow the instructions and just standardize. So I'm going to make a new variable called Z country. I should capitalize Z and type it correctly. And if we, if we do a scale on country, and uh, beforehand I counted the columns. It's column six. So let's just do it now. One, two, three, four, five. So cooking is column six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Quilting is 15. Okay, so now we've just um, standardized those columns. If we look at Z country, you'll notice that it only has the um, interest variables, and they all have mean zero. So let's compute the cluster solution. So I'm going to say fit is equal to K means, and we'll pass the uh, value Z country. And let's find the three cluster solution as the uh, instructions suggested. And we'll run it with, say, 50 starting values. And this takes um, a couple seconds on my, on my laptop. And then let's go look at the solution. So what we see is that the first cluster is made up of people who are below average on all of these activities. Now, these are people... Uh, who get this country magazine, yet they don't engage in any of the activities. Um, I like to think of this cluster as being kind of a, a vicarious country segment. So they get the magazine and they read about all these activities, they just don't have time to do them themselves. Um, another another uh, term that I use from them is the dreamers. So they dream about all this, but they don't necessarily do it. Let's look at the other two clusters. And you have two flavors of very active country style people. So now we need to figure out what is the difference between the two. So let's start with this first dot. You get the quilting dot. Uh, segment three is really into quilting. Segment two is below average on quilting. 
Now, if you look at sewing, this is a slightly harder to, harder comparison to make. It would be nice to have a reference line at one. And what you'll see is that um, you know cluster three is pretty pretty into sewing. Um, cluster two is less into sewing. They're just slightly above average. Now, when it comes to collectibles, there's not much difference. It looks like they're both about a 0.5. When it comes to do it yourself, yeah, not much difference, a little bit below one. Uh, but when it comes to woodworking, okay, um, not a whole lot of difference. Cluster two is probably about a 0.3. Uh, cluster three is a bit higher. At this point, we might want to look at a summary of fit, and we can actually compare those numbers. So, um, you know, back back to what we were saying. Uh, you know, off cluster three is off the chart on quilting. Uh, quite a bit higher on sewing. Not much going on with collectibles. Not much of a difference in DIY. Little difference in in woodworking. You see a difference in needlework. You see a difference in crafts. Not much of a difference in in gardening. Not much of a difference in decorating. Not much of a difference in cooking. So. The, the way I um, would, would look at this is you've got a, a group, two groups that are, that are doing a lot of these activities. Three is especially into any sort of needle crafts. So quilting, sewing, um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the needlework, of course, and the crafts. Whereas two is just your general um, a doer. They're kind of, they, they dabble in a lot of these things. So... It, not a bad idea to label your clusters at this point. So we could do that with a fit dollar cluster is equal to a factor. And let's see, the values are going to come from fit dollar cluster. And the values are one through three. So one is this dreamer segment. So let's call them the dreamers. Um, two is this group that's just kind of a general uh, doer. And then three is your needle doer. Um, they, they, they do everything, but they especially like needlework. And then let's get a table just to make sure I assign these things correctly. So the general doer, needle doer, and so forth. So it looks like I did that right. The largest group is the, uh, is the dreamers. In fact, over half, our, our, um, half the files of dreamers. All right, um, the next question was to profile them. So let's do that. Now what you're gonna notice, remember we, we saw some uh, problems with age. So let's get a histogram of country dollar age and see how much of a, a problem this is. And so there's not much of a problem. There's a very small number of zeros that don't make a whole lot of sense. We should probably set those to missing. So country dollar age sub country dollar age um, less than, I don't know, 18. It's a reasonable value. These are adults. Usually you read this magazine. You could you could go a bit lower. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some, you know, teenagers reading this magazine for the uh, craft suggestions. And we'll just set those to NAs. Now if we repeat the histogram you'll notice that that uh, bar is gone. All right, um, I'm not as concerned about these really old people as I was with the fitness data set. You know, this is, uh, you know, quilting and crafts, and you can still some, do some of those things when you're in your 90s. So I'm not gonna do anything about the, about the upper values. I don't think it's gonna matter since it's such a small percentage. Now let's, um, let's go do a T apply on this. So I'd like to find the means of country dollar age by fit dollar cluster, and we want means. And okay, we got a, a problem with the NAs. So you can there's an option um, na.rm that works with a lot of functions in R, and that causes R to um, drop all the records where uh, where the values NA. So what you're going to see is that these dreamers tend to be a little bit younger than the the other two the the two doer segments. Um, now let's let's see what other demos we have. So the other demos we have a dwelling type. 
So let's do a prop dot table and a table and we'll take fit dollar dwell not fit dollar dwell we're going to make that country dollar dwell and then this is going to be fit dollar cluster and then two means give me the column percent so we want a condition on segment and so what we see here I, the documentation is as often as the case is lousy uh, we have to figure out what s and m are and I suspect that S is a single um, a single family dwelling, whereas M is multiple family dwellings. So these would be more apartment dwellers and condominium dwellers. These are people who have single family homes. And so what you're going to notice is that uh, they all tend to live in single family homes. However, the dreamers are a bit less likely to live in a single family home than these, these doers. So if you're doing all these things, I guess you need the space, and that's, you know, you tend to have more space when you have a single family home. All right, well, let's, um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, if we look at gender, this is mostly a female magazine, um, and that shows up. Very little difference across the segments. They're all predominantly female, as we would expect. So there's not much going on with, uh, with female. Let's go look at marital status. So marital status, I get really nervous with all these missing values because I don't know why they're missing. And so there could be some systematic biases. That tend, the um, dreamers are overrepresented in missing. Um, the dreamers uh, looks like, look like they're a little bit less likely to be married than the other two segments. There's not much going on with uh, single. These are mostly older people, so they tend to be um, married or widowed. Um, so I'm not quite sure what those missings are. Um, other is, is almost non-existent. I'm assuming O means other. So um, the, the, the dreamer is a little bit less likely to be married, although their, you know, the modal value is, is married. Let's look at occupation. Now again, uh, the modal category for all of them is missing, and who knows what that means. Um, w is probably white collar, so the dreamers tend to be a little bit less likely to be white collar. I'm going to guess R is retired. So um, while none of these segments are especially likely to be retired, the um, dreamers are less likely, several times less likely to be retired than the two doer segments. So my um, my takeaway from this is, uh, you know, they, they just don't have time to do all these activities because they're probably, they're, you know, they're more likely to be working. Um, so they don't, they don't live in a, a big house, uh, or they're less likely to live in a single family dwelling and less likely to, um, uh, you know, be retired where they can be doing these things. The other variable that we had was income. So let's go take a look at income. So let's just go back to my T apply command and modify that. So instead of age, let's type in income two. And what we what we see is there's not much going on. The dreamers have slightly higher income, but not by much. So we have a the picture is that these dreamers tend to be a bit younger, more likely to be working, um, a little bit more likely to be working and uh, a little bit less likely to be living in a single family home, although um, the modal value is that. Now, a few more uh, points on this. I said that these variables were all very right skewed. We could um, look at logging them, but the, I, I didn't think the log was going to fix much. So I'm going to make a new, a new object called log country. We're just going to log a country sub columns 6 through 15. Now the zeros can't take the log of 0, so I'm going to add 1 to avoid taking the log of 0. Now if I plot, um, actually we'll do a histogram of log country dollar needle, you're going to notice the histogram hasn't changed much. That big lump of zeros is still there with exactly the same number and you have uh, scattered values out here. So logging is not going to do much for us in this particular case. Uh, why don't we 
go ahead with all the steps. I'm going to make a Z log country object. So we'll scale log country. And then let's do fit log, fit dot log is equal to k means of z log country three clusters and we'll do 50 starting values and then let's plot this so plot oops we gotta type it right fit dot log and what we end up with is about the same thing so two is now your dreamer segment one is now your general doer. Three is now your your uh, needle segment. And if you want to see how much consistency is between those segments, we could do a cross tab on them. So fit dollar log, fit dot log, dollar cluster, and then what was this fit dollar cluster? And so what you'll see is the doers, you know there's a lot of overlap between the two cluster solutions. It's just um, on, the, on the fringes where um, people get moved to one segment or the other. So whether you use the log solution or the um, unlog solution doesn't really matter much. It's always good to do a little robustness check like this. All right, the last part of this question asks you to find the four cluster solution. So let's go do that. Uh, what, what I'll do is we'll take the four cluster solution, we'll use the original unlogged data, and I guess I'll call this fit four. So we'll set that running, and then we'll plot it. And let's go study what we've got. So segment one is a segment of dreamers still. Now we've got... Um, some additional flavors of doers. So it looks like this segment four is um, is, a, is a just into everything. They're, they're, they do everything. Um, but you've got two different flavors of of uh, specialized doers. So segment three is into your quilting, needleworks, and crafts, and they're actually a little bit below average on a lot of the other activities or close to average. While cluster two you'll see is, is doing other stuff. So they're into cooking and gardening and decorating. Those two really hang together. So, you know, if I have a garden, what do I do with it? Well, I probably have flowers or vegetables and um, I'll decorate with the flowers and cook the vegetables. Um, do, or, do it yourself and collectibles, but they're really not into the needlework at all. It's kind of interesting to look at the um, but a cross tab of the two solutions. So fit dollar four, fit four dollar cluster, and what was the other one? Fit dollar cluster. And what we see is that um, most of those dreamers go to that uh, that cluster one as we would expect, and uh, the the general doers well, they they kind of uh, get scattered across the the needle doers tend to go to that, that cluster four, that, that uh, extreme doer. All right, so which, which do we like better? The um, uh, three cluster, the four cluster solution was another question. And I guess this really depends on what we're gonna do with, with, with these clusters. So if we, if we um, wanna create contact points that are specifically targeted at uh, people are not necessarily into the, all the, the needle uh, needlework and, and craft uh, stuff and, and are more into just the cooking and gardening, then the four cluster solution is going to be uh, preferred. Uh, if we're not going to really want to uh, come up with anything for this cooking and gardening group, then um, then we, we really don't need the, the four cluster solution. So I guess it really comes down to whether we want to uh, target this, this, this cluster two in any way. And um, that's, uh, that's it. We, we, we should probably go run profiles, but I'm not going to do that in the video.